all living creatures tell us the story of our world, and the Museum of Riverside collects and shares these stories. Some of the most important stories are told by the smallest specimens, and the smallest at the museum are insects. The collection is made up of just a few thousand insects collected in Southern California. So what can this tell us about a class of animal that has an estimated population of 10 quintillion globally? As the curator of natural history will explain, it can tell us a lot about insects and a lot about the world. I'm Douglas Long, curator of natural history at the Museum of Riverside. One of the things I like about entomology is that it's multidisciplinary. Um, insects, the study of insects, requires a researcher to be an interdisciplinarian because we're not just studying the insects, we're studying their role in the, in the environment, their role in the ecosystem, what plants they associate with, what their predators are, what their prey is, the types of um, climates they survive in, when their reproductive cycles are, and how that interrelates with um, other natural occurrences that are happening. And so it's not necessarily just looking at a bug and thinking about a bug, it's thinking about the big picture, how that bug is in its environment, how that insect fits within the ecosystem. And if we think about California, where we have over 27,000 different species of insects, we start to understand the interrelationships, the spider web of associations that all animals have with each other. One of the reasons why insects are such good tools at understanding climate change is because different species will have a very tight relationship with an ecosystem or habitat. They reproduce very quickly. They can produce many generations over a short period of time. And because they're abundant, they can be collected. So unlike say birds, for example, in which uh, it's much harder to collect them, uh, with insects, it's much easier. So we can actually acquire and accumulate more data over a relatively short period of time. The two major types of preservation for entomology collections are uh, pinning the insect, which is literally putting a pin through it so that it can hold the tag and then it goes into a foam um, drawer. Uh, that is basically drying out the insect and because they have a hard exoskeleton, there tends not to be much change or deformation as they dry out. Um, some arthropods that have soft tissues, if they dry, they will sort of deform and um, get out of shape. And so we will then preserve them in fluid, uh, usually ethanol, in some cases formalin, so that the soft tissues will preserve without uh, any change in their characters. Each insect has its own personal history, the data that comes with it. And once we combine multiple individuals, we start to see a story emerging. If we look at insects over time, the data that accompanies those insects over time will show us very important things, like for example, how climate has changed. We're looking at how we can understand what we mean by biodiversity. You know, in one area, there may have been 120 species of beetles today, there might only be 40. Or it might be the other way around, that there might be species uh, coming from Mexico that are naturally moving up here because we're getting changes in climate. We're also seeing, um, in California in particular, uh, increase in the diversity of species because there are waves and waves of new species being introduced, unintentionally in most cases, from other areas. Every year there are new species of insects in California. Well, we need to record that. We need to collect those species. We need to document where they were, when they were collected, how they got here, if we know it, so that we can start to see these changes, natural and unnatural changes to our ecosystem, in which these insects provide key parts of information that are individual pieces in a puzzle that we can put together to see what that broad picture really is.